Police in Antioch, California, will be back at the home of Philip Garrido today looking for clues, not in the case of J.C. Dugard, whom he is accused of holding captive for 18 years, but for clues in the kidnapping of two other girls abducted in the same area around the same time. In a moment, we're going to speak with the mother of one of those girls, but first, our Brian Rooney joins us from outside Garrido's home with the latest. Good morning, Brian. Robin, Garrido's property has been searched before, and so is the neighboring property over here. But they brought 60 officers in here yesterday, and this is going to be a much more detailed search for the next couple of days. This time, they say they'll pick the place apart, even use special equipment to look underground for possible evidence of these two other missing girls. We don't know for sure yet if we're going to be raising the building, but um, we are um, very interested in what might be behind walls, uh, under flooring. Uh, under the ground, so that is a possibility. They're looking for traces of nine year old Michaela Garrett, who was abducted from Hayward, California in 1988, and 13 year old Eileen Micheloff, who went missing from Dublin, California in 1989. Police say they see similarities between their disappearances and that of 29 year old J.C. Dugard, who was freed last month after living 18 years and having two daughters with accused kidnapper Philip Garrido. We do have a single witness who states that he saw Eileen get into a vehicle, which is similar to a vehicle which was, which was removed from this property. Police also compared this witness description of the kidnapper back then and Philip Garrido as he looked at the time. And they said there was a stunning physical resemblance between J.C. Dugard and Michaela Garrett at the age they were taken. Garrett's mother keeps her hopes alive on a website. These are portrayals of what both young women might look like today at ages 29 and 30. Police say Garrido and his wife Nancy know about this search. Both are being held without bail on charges of kidnapping and rape in the abduction of J.C. Dugard, who, with her daughters, is back living with her family. One of those previous searches turned up a piece of bone which has not yet been identified as to whether it is animal or human. And Robin, this search is going to continue later this morning and probably go on for several days. They might very well actually take the house down. They take the house down. Is that what you're saying, Brian? They, they, it's possible. They, they're not saying definitely, but they are really going to pick this place apart, and that might involve taking the house down. All right. I know they feel there's so many clues here. Thank you, Prine. Chris, you've also been mm. reporting on this story this morning as well. The type of completeness would make sense because mm. of how long these families have waited. Imagine 21 years wondering what had happened to your child. That's what Sharon Murch has been doing. She's Michaela's mother, waiting, hoping, searching. And now she's hoping for answers more than ever. We spoke with Sharon just a few moments ago. What went through your mind when news of Garrido hit the wires and about other girls and about the time frame matching when you lost your little girl? When JC was found, um, my first thought was, please God, let Michaela be with her. Michaela's case and JC's case have intersected over the years because of the similarities in their abductions. We have pictures of them side by side. There is an uncanny similarity between these two beautiful little girls. The car that was supposedly seen abducting your daughter was very similar to the one that took JC. Uh, right. The car that was, that was taken out of the Garrido's backyard uh, looks very much like the car that Michaela was kidnapped mm -hmm. in. I received a call from our eyewitness when she saw it on the news and she said, that looks like the car I saw Michaela kidnapped in. And Garrido does resemble the sketch of the potential suspect that was taken early on in your case, doesn't it? Yes, he does. So all of this must be fueling hope for you. How have you sustained hope over these 20 years? Well, there was a period of time, I have to tell you, when I did lose hope. I lost my faith. I lost my hope. And uh, it's just been in the last few years that I think I have uh, become strong enough to be able to hold on to that hope. Uh, to live with a hope that is continually unfulfilled is really one of the most difficult things in the world. To imagine where your child might be and what your child might be suffering over an extended period of time is one of the most difficult things in the world. And, and for a while, it was easier for me to believe that she was in a better place than this, where there is no pain and, the, and where there is no sorrow. But 
over the last few years, my hope really has been resurrected. What's your best sense? Do you think Phil Garrido is behind the disappearance of your daughter? I have so many fears and desires tied up in the whole thing that it's hard for me to really have a good sense of whether he is or not. But I do remain hopeful that, uh, that this will lead to finding Michaela alive. One of my main hopes is pinned on the fact that Garrido's neighbors several years ago reported that there were girls living in the backyard and they didn't report that there were three girls, they reported that there were five. And they said they all looked alike, they were all little blonde girls. And uh, that leads me to hope that one of them was Michaela and that she is still alive and that we will find her. How clearly do you remember the last time you saw your daughter? I remember it as though it was just yesterday. Tell me about it. Uh, she had asked if she could go to the store with her friend and at first I said no and she begged and begged and finally I gave in and said yes. And I walked to the front door and watched as she and her friend picked up their scooters from the driveway to ride to the store. And before she left, she turned around and she said to me, I love you, Mom. And I said, I love you, Michaela. And those were the last words that we said to each other. And I watched her as she rode her scooter to the end of the block until she turned around the corner out of sight. And that's the last time that I saw her. It's been almost 21 years, it's almost hard to believe that this nightmare could ever actually end. But with the, the events of, of recent, of the past year, never mind the last month, but of the past year, it just seems as though uh, there's a spotlight being shone on Michaela and there must be a reason for it. And I believe that it's time for us to find the answers and time for her to come home. If Garrido did have other daughters out there, and I use that term loosely, if one of them is Michaela, maybe she's even listening, what would you want her to know? And that is one of my main hopes, is that she sees all of this coverage of her case. And I just want to say, Michaela, if you're out there and you can hear my voice, I just want you to know that I love you. I have never stopped loving you. There is nothing that you could have gone through in these last 20 years that we cannot overcome that you cannot be healed from, and there's nothing that could ever change my feelings about you, so please, just come home. Dial 911, go to a police station. I have a website, missingmichaela.com, which has all of our contact information on it, so that you can find us, so that you can come home. Well, Sharon, here's to hoping that there is another JC out there, that Michaela is there, and certainly we hope you get an answer soon. Thank you. You heard the website there, missingmichaela.com. If you have any information, please go to it.